What's up everybody? Bruce Epus here. Welcome back to 24 Ounce Tuesday. Let's drink a beer. Cheers. Ah, Tuesday's done. Monday down, Tuesday down. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for a lot of us. Maybe more, maybe less for some of us. Either way, it's Tuesday evening and we got a beer. And that helps a lot, regardless. I got something pretty exciting to talk about today. So, I've been crunching some numbers and what I've decided to do Instead of all these five gallon kits, I'm gonna start doing more one gallon kits. So that way I can do more of a variety. Cause I mean, you don't wanna play around with a chocolate stout and have five gallons and then turn around next weekend and play around with a new IPA and have five more gallons. I mean, I can't go through beer that fast and I don't have enough friends that come over, so. What I'm going to do is make up a bunch of little one gallon batches, but instead of going the extract route, which is the easy way to go with one gallon batches, I mean, Brewer's Best, Northern Brewer, they all sell one gallon batches in the extract. I don't know about all grain, but I'm going to keep it all grain, okay? I'm going to still do extract kits here and there because I do like most of them. Um, I'll still do my favorites. But I did an experiment earlier this weekend and basically what I did was poured two gallons of water into my brew kettle, okay, my brew pot back here, used my burner and my propane and did an hour boil basically just to see how much boil off I got. I did mark the regulator on the propane burner so I know exactly where my flame was because that's going to be important. If it's higher, if it's lower, I'll get more or less boil off. So I'm going to keep that burn consistent, keep that flame the same. And over an hour's time, I boiled off a gallon. Okay. So I'm going to keep everything consistent. Now that I know that, now that I know how much boil off I get, it makes running the other numbers pretty easy. So when I do my first beer, I'll probably do a pale ale. Just because it's pretty middle of the road. You know, it's not going to be too hoppy. Um, but it'll be fairly hoppy. So probably what I'm going to do is mash in two and a half, three quarts of water. I know you don't want to mash in too much water. I know you don't want to mash in too little water. Usually what one and a half or like 1.25 quarts per pound, one and a half quarts per pound is a pretty good grist ratio. So my plan for my first beer, I'm going to use two pounds of grains and I'm going to mash in three quarts of water. Okay. 2.5 to three quarts of water my plan and I'll talk more about this when I actually brew um, is to do a pound and a half of just pale two row US two row and then a half a pound of caramel crystal malt tin okay and then I'm only gonna need a quarter ounce of hops at 60 minutes 0.2 ounces probably use cascade uh, and just whirlpool them at the end it's gonna be super easy I'm not dealing with a big volume of anything so it should shorten brew day mashing this is the interesting part the guys I've watched I think they I think their steep water or their strike water was at 160 or something like that and then over the course of like 30 minutes because Supposedly most of the conversions that are gonna happen happen in the first 30 minutes of the mash, maybe less. So these guys just put their strike water at 160, dowed in their grains, left it. And it dropped down, you know, to like 
147 or something like that, which is fine. What I'm going to do, my oven goes to 170. That's as low as it goes. So I'm going to preheat my oven to 170, okay? And I'm going to turn it off. And ovens are insulated pretty well. I talked to my buddy about this. It should hold at 170 at least for 30 minutes. So my strike water will be at, you know, between 150 and 155, 160. And then I'm gonna go in the malt, put it in the oven with the lid on it, this thing right here, for probably 30 minutes and just mash in the oven. And that's gonna maintain a fairly consistent temp. The temp may raise a bit, but as long as I don't get over, you know, like 160, 165, it'd be great, okay? And according to my calculations, it's possible. So that's the mashing. Then I'm gonna rinse, so we got a sparge. I'm gonna rinse out the grain bag. Some people don't do it. But I need more water than that. Two quarts I'm probably gonna come out with because those grains will probably soak up a quart. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna have my 170 degree sparge water and just rinse then up to two gallons in the boil kettle, okay? And then I'm gonna boil and make the rest of the beer. So if I get a gallon boil off, I'll come out with about a gallon that'll then go into my gallon jug and I won't fill it up the whole way. I'll, I'll get like three quarters of a gallon. So the math in my mind checks out and I can make these little one gallon all grain beers and make many of them. And that's what I'm going for. <clears throat> so I know this, uh, this 24 ounce Tuesday, I kind of dove right into it. It's a little more scientific than I like to keep them a lot of times, but I'm so excited because I can still brew all grain beer and I don't have to like carry five gallon buckets in and out of the house. I don't have to mess with the robo brew. I don't have to dig a lot of stuff out and I can make many, many beers and try a crazy variety and hopefully experiment a heck of a lot more. And then if I taste one that I'm like, ooh, I'd love to have five gallons of this, I can just convert the recipe to five gallons. Cheers, everybody. So again, this video is probably gonna stay pretty technical. I got a couple more things to say about the whole one gallon all grain process. I saw here on Home Brew Talk that just talking about conversion and the mashing process, a little bit more detail there. Conversion happens extremely rapidly at 155 and over, okay? So if my strike water is, we'll say 155, and then I put it into a 170 degree oven where the temp's gonna be holding <clears throat> fairly well, this guy says my shortest mash was 10 minutes in the conversion range. It cost me about three quarters of a point on my ABV, which I don't care about, and gave more body. Conversion was 100% according to the iodine test, but fermentability was slightly reduced. Also, he added a fine crush, makes all the difference. So maybe my grains will need to be milled a little more finely. I'll ask Gail at the brew shop about that. So, 10 minutes, I mean, sounds like 30's overkill. I was thinking about doing a 45 minute mash just to be safe, but it sounds like if, if we keep our temp up between 155 and 165, we could do it in 10 minutes. So we'll just do a 30 minute mash. This is going to take so much time off the brew day. And it's funny, when I started brewing, all I wanted was for brew day to last forever. But I think after you've done it enough, and especially if you're drinking beers while you're brewing, I don't know that I need to be out here for eight or nine hours. 
in the fall, yeah, it's different. In the summer, maybe it's my summer mentality that's saying that. Because in the fall, when the weather's nice, it's easier to spend more time out here. You, I could be playing tiddlywinks out here and it wouldn't matter to me. I'd rather be making beer. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll spend more time out here during the fall, make up some more five gallon batches. But right now, it's really just about space to me. Get some more of those one gallon glass jugs. The hop samplers are still in them right now. Get about six or seven little beers going at the same time. Nice quality all grain beers that I make in small batches. That sounds like fun. And it sounds like I found my sweet spot too. Like every time I haul a five gallon bucket into the house, I tell myself, brewing is a young man's game. Like, I can't do this when I'm 60 or 70. So, it almost feels like I found, it's like the game of golf, I'll put it this way. I tell my friends all the time, the best thing you can give your kids is a love for the game of golf because they can play golf their whole entire life. You can't play football when you're 90. I know people who have hobbled out to the golf course and maybe they're terrible, maybe they're hitting from the women's tees. It's still golf. You can still play golf. I was watching a golf tournament a couple weeks ago for handicapped people. Some were sitting in these little chairs, you know, on the edge of the golf cart, strapped in, still playing the game of golf. And brewing, I feel like if you just make little one gallon batches, you can do that your whole life. You don't have to lift a five gallon bucket or carboy up over the side of a deep freeze. You can still lager. I could put these little five gallon jugs into my deep freeze and lager those things. So the sky's the limit really. And that's what it feels like. Five gallon batches are fun. I still have the Pliny the Elder extract kit to brew. But man, I feel like, I feel like I climbed the mountain and what I see from the top of the mountain is paradise. It's like I had to do a lot of work to get here. But once the realization struck me that, wait a minute, you can still make all grain beer you can do it in the house. You can do it on the stove in the winter time. Use your oven. Or just leave it on your stove like those guys in the video I watched did. And it'll slowly cool down, maybe wrap some insulation of some kind around the around the boil kettle to keep that heat in. And you can still make all grain beer. And you don't have to have five gallons of it. That's that's awesome. There's only a handful of beers I'd want five gallons of at this point, honestly. If I did a nice light lager, I'd want five gallons of it because it's going to go way too fast. What else would I want five gallons of? If I made the Oktoberfest again, that's a lager. I definitely want five gallons of that. My pale ales, my IPAs, anything that's super hoppy, or anything that's that you would consider hoppy. I don't need five gallons of it. Honestly, a six pack at a time is good for me. And like a Dale's, fairly hoppy, but it's got a nice grain base to it. You know, it finishes off with a grain sweetness, nice body. That's a little bit different. If it's any hoppier than that, nah. And even a Dale's, like five gallons of it. I'm too, my mood changes too much from day to day. One thing remains consistent. A light lager, you can just pound them all the time. Five gallons, they go quick. That's easy. Same with the Oktoberfest. It's such a nice damn beer and a light, easy drinker that it's it's a pleasure to have five gallons but anything else i mean a stout give me a six pack ipa give me a six pack 
can't wait to play around with this. See, I was never making really crazy beers before, but now that I'm only gonna have a gallon of it, five to six bottles, it's like, let me just try this crazy beer and I can do that. Hmm. So all that being said, we can't keep it completely technical. I mean, when you're out here drinking a beer, I mean, it's fun to think, it's fun to do beer math and think about all the possibilities. But we have to center ourselves. We have to talk our brewing philosophy and why we keep doing this. And why is that? Because it's easy to make great beer. That's why we do it. And some of us make it harder, some of us make it easier, but we do what we enjoy. And if you don't enjoy science, if you failed chemistry in high school like I did, you can still make great beer, okay? Now, that being said, I wanna share something I read. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote this. He said, write it on your heart that every day is the best day of the year and especially brew days. He didn't say that, but he probably would have believed it. He is rich who owns the day, and no one owns the day who allows it to be invaded with fret and anxiety. Finish every day and be done with it. You've done what you could, some blunders and absurdities, and who would have it any other way? That's me speaking. No doubt crept in. Forget them as soon as you can. Tomorrow is a new day. Begin it well and serenely. With too high a spirit to be cumbered with your old nonsense. This new day is too dear with its hopes and invitations to waste a moment on the yesterdays. I read that and I was thinking about brewing at the time. So I kind of related it all to brewing. We have many hopes as home brewers. We have many anxieties, most of us. What did I do wrong? How is it gonna affect the outcome of my beer? But really, at the end of the day, if it's bad, pour it out, make another one. I know it sucks, and it sucks to spend all that time making beer when it turns out shit but shit happens. So we just move right along, make another one. I told you I'd let you know what I ended up doing with the beer in that keg during my last video. <clears throat> Tell you what I ended up doing with it. To get the beer out, to pour another glass, I had to depressurize disconnect the gas and the tap, depressurize, take the top off, and literally pour it from the keg into my beer glass. Cause dadgummit, I put all that work in, I wanted at least one more, and it wasn't coming through the hose, and I wasn't gonna hook the gas up to that outpost one more time to shoot pressure through it and unclog that hose from all the hops. So after I did that, obviously I had it open, I'm not gonna drink out of it. I'm not I'm not drinking any more of that beer. Um, but instead of opting to leave it unhooked from the gas and all that, to leave it out here in the hot garage where the beer could spoil, like I don't want that in my keg. So what I did, I put the top back on, I put it back in the fridge, and I put it back under CO2 pressure. So it's still under there at eight pounds PSI. And I'm just gonna leave it there until it's time to clean. I just don't have any cleaner right now. I would have cleaned it, I would have dumped it and cleaned it that day had I had cleaner. But I didn't have any cleaner, I was busy, I couldn't get to the brew shop. So I put it back in there until hopefully tomorrow uh, I can go get some cleaner after work and I'll clean out that keg. But for now, it's staying in the fridge under CO2 pressure where it's safe, nothing's gonna spoil. So really my decision was to not make a decision. I did make a decision. 
I just left it as it was and that's fine with me. It's fine where it's at. I don't need that last keg I had that I let beer sit in for six months when I just quit and disappeared last year. That can't happen again. So I'm gonna do right. I'm gonna do it right this time. We really kept it fairly technical this time. One gallon batches, all grain. For those of you who think you even have to have a mash ton to brew all grain beer, I mean, we're gonna see how good mine turns out. Maybe I'll wait to say all this after that, but I feel like it's gonna come out really good. My buddy's done it. I've seen other people on YouTube do it. I have great hope for it. I think it's gonna be great. So, if you can brew an extract kit, I mean, a lot of extract kits come with specialty grains where you have to steep the grains for a while. If you can do that and you own a stove and a four gallon boil kettle, I don't see why you couldn't make an all grain beer. It's always listed as advanced but after you do it a few times, it's like, maybe you have to be advanced for the thing to come out spot on every time. But I'm telling you, even if you're not advanced and you miss your numbers a little bit, you're still gonna come out with a good beer. If you hit your numbers, every now and then, you're gonna make a beauty. Even if you're not advanced, okay? Watch some videos, read some stuff. It's really not that hard to make good beer. It's really not that hard to make good all grain beer. Okay? Even if you're a beginner, it's pretty simple really. Stay on YouTube. Follow me. Subscribe. Watch other people. Mosky Homebrew. Those guys, they're the ones I saw brew on their stove. This little one gallon all grain batch. And I was like, Mosky, I know them. I have their sticker on my beer on my beer fridge in there so good guys good stuff cheers everybody as always let me just encourage you keep making beer don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff your beer is going to turn out great even if you were talking to a buddy and a little spit flew into the bucket, it's going to be okay, probably. Brewlosophy really opened my eyes to a lot of that stuff. You can make a lot of stupid mistakes and still, still come out with a good beer. Okay, so don't worry about it. Just keep making that beer. Keep watching, keep watching the brew tubers on YouTube. Make your own videos. I'd like to see what you have to say. I'd like to learn from your experiences. And truth be told, I could watch anyone in this world make a beer. Sometimes I'll just get on YouTube to watch someone make a beer. Don't really care what they say. Just, if they're hanging out and saying something and brewing a beer, that's a good time. So that's what brought me here in the first place. And that's why I plan to stick around. That's all I got. See you guys on Saturday. We might do Pliny the Elder on Saturday. We might make our first gallon all grain batch. Not sure which yet. Maybe some inspiration will hit me in the middle of the week and maybe we'll come up with a different plan altogether. But right now, those are the choices. Okay, we might do Pliny. We might do an all grain one gallon batch. And we'll do some hop samplers here pretty soon. We'll taste those. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. We'll see you next time. Saturday, 10 a.m. Cheers.